February 1st of, of this year, 2019, it was nighttime, about 7.30. It was dark, it was cold. And I was going around this park nearby where I live, in, south of Denver, Cherry Creek State Park. And it's a big 10 mile loop. Just, I've been on it pr probably 3,000, 4,000 times. And probably five, 600 times at night. I had a light on. I had these bar mitts on to keep my hands warm because it was cold. And, and I took off and I, I really, I didn't tell anybody where I was going, which I normally tell people, you know, where I'm going, but I, I didn't. I didn't think anything was going to happen. And I used a fat bike, you know, these fat tires, almost five inches wide for stability. So I took off and, you know, I'm just cruising along and I'm dived back, back down into the park, and it's dry, I mean, except for one place. <laughs> and as I'm turning my bike, I feel the bike start sliding out from underneath me. No big deal. I grab the rear brake, which usually, you know, puts me back into stability. And then the front tire went off, and the front tire hit a log, and it immediately stopped the bike. And I'm on there, and I can't brace myself so I land on top of my head. I have a helmet on. I land on top of my head and with my body weight in the bike. And I hear a snap in my neck. And I knew I broke my neck. And then everything went out. It was empty space. Like there was, it was devoid of even color. It was devoid of black. It was, it was empty. I mean, it was just an interesting moment. And then everything is bright, light, white, golden white light. It's in it's those little iridescent blues. And it was a great experience. And I'm just thinking, and I am so happy. I'm just blissed out. This, it, I feel bliss. I feel ease. There's no burden in this place. I'm thinking, I feel loved. I feel presence all around me. You know, like, like it was over here. And, it, and I'm thinking, okay, um, this is kind of, this is a great experience. I'm enjoying myself. I feel no pain at all. And I see in the distance this little boy. He's kind of turned from me. He's about eight. And he's writing something. And... I can feel what he's writing. And it's things that I've wanted to do or need to do. And I thought, okay, that's kind of neat. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm, and again, it's you know, I'm condensing a little bit. There, there's individualized presence, but it's all combined, which is an interesting concept. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm ready to go. And I can see, like, I gotta go. And when I walk, I don't walk, I just move. And I go there immediately. And I'm thinking, all right, I'm ready to leave. And then suddenly, the presence gives me options. I said, well, yeah, you can leave. Or you can come back as a quadriplegic. And I saw an image of me. I'm, I'm a quad. And I have this tube down my throat. It's like, whoa. I said, I don't want that. And then it was, well, the other option is then is go back and heal. And I said, I'll go back and heal. And so God says, go back and heal, and, or life, or whatever this presence is. And I'm thinking, okay, um, I'm on my way. But as I'm leaving, or returning, and, I, and by the way, I know that I've been there before. I'm really, and, every, and I'm really comfortable about it. Oh, this is another thing. Presence told me is everybody, every single person is going there when they die. And, some of my, and I posted this on YouTube, and some people don't like that. It's just like, but everybody's going there. This is a truly benevolent presence. And I knew that earth consciousness, earth life, is a subset of that. And that life there that's in us is so much more real than this life. I mean, it's like, I can't even, I can't even describe it. It's just like, this is, I mean, this is real too, as real as consciousness is real. But this is... Everything's just 
you know, everybody, everything, every atom. I don't even think there were atoms in it, though. It just it was weird. I, you know, I didn't measure anything, but it didn't feel like anything was separate from anything else. It was just beautiful white light that made everything. So I return, and, and I've got my eyes closed, and all of a sudden I'm laying on my left side because I, la I landed in a crumple. And I, and I recalled that I broke my neck. So I thought, okay, well, we'll get your toes because I don't want to cause any more damage to myself if, you know, I damaged my spinal cord. So I wiggled my toes. Oh, that's good. So I sat up and I crossed my legs and somehow I found my cell phone and it has this quad lock on it. It's very difficult to get off when I'm lucid. So somehow I got it off and I called 911 and I don't remember talking to them. I don't. My, you know, so then I called my then girlfriend. It, her phone was off. She was at an event. I talked to my brother and I said, hey, Sam, or whatever I told him because I, I don't remember what I told him. And I told him what happened. I told him I broke my neck. I told him in Cherry Creek State Park, I need you to come get me. And then I hung up. And then I called my then girlfriend again. And her phone's still off because you know, she's busy. I called my brother back. I go, hey, Sam, I broke my neck. <laughs> this is what he told me. <laughs> so you know, he's, he doesn't say anything. He doesn't, he's just listening to me. So he calls his sons, my nephews, to go, because we're not too far away from where I was, or they weren't too far away. And, and then after I hang up, I put my elbows into my knees and just held onto my head to make a makeshift halo so I wouldn't move my neck. Because I'm certain I broke it. And then at some point, I don't know, about 15 minutes or so, the paramedics show up. And all I just see is lights. And then all of a sudden, you know, putting this thing on my neck, and then they're sticking me in the ambulance. And I'm not a person who usually says anything if I'm uncomfortable. And I said, and there were a couple of guys, probably in their 30s, I go, hey guys, I broke my neck. You have to be more careful with me. <laughs> and, you know, so, and they were. We take off to this nondescript medical center of Aurora to, for surgery. And I've driven past this thing thousands, I've never seen it before. This is not well known. And they, you know, they, they, they prep me. And, and they, they, again, and I also had a concussion. So this stuff, I don't really remember what happened there. I just remember they had to form a team so that the next morning, Saturday morning, they would um, do the surgery. They took the x-rays. They, they did the surgery. It was eight and a half hours long. It was called an internal decapitation. My head literally came off my spine. They ran a couple titanium rods. Well, well, C1, C1 blew up. I mean, it shattered a bunch of pieces. They couldn't even put it back together. C2 broke into pieces, and C3 connection broke. And they had to put some kind of glue, and they stuck screws through the titanium rods into my spine, and then they stuck a plate <laughs> onto the back of my head and screwed that on. So my head would literally stay on my spine. The pieces, there were pieces of the, uh, of the uh, spine that were too close to the cord where they just left it in. And that's kind of important because the next day, it's now Sunday, and I'm, I said to them, I said, look, I, I wanna walk. And they said, what? And I go, yeah, I want to walk around. I want to get some exercise. I want to move. I'm tired of laying here. So they called the doctor. And they said, OK, if he wants to walk, let him walk. And I mean, I walked for 10, 15 minutes just walking. And I felt absolutely fine. The next day, I said, I want to leave. And they said, you're on morphine. <laughs> this was, he said, well, I said, then um, just get me on the pills right now so I can leave. And they put me on the pills. And then the next day, that would have been Tuesday morning, I left. And I was back together, working the next day. I mean, they put me on pain meds. And by the way, I am doing this meditation. I am, in fact, before I had the surgery, they said we're thinking about surgery, I contemplated whether getting surgery or not. I asked my body, his body, do you need this? Oh yeah, the body said, oh yeah, you need surgery. So I, then I went ahead with it. 
So there I am, and, I, and I'm practicing. I'm practicing these meditations, and all, you know, as much as, I, as much as I can. Well, I've been meditating off and on for 40 years. So it's kind of like, a, basically I have this one love meditation. And, and love's not like, I love you love, but love that bonds and heals everything. That's my setup. And then I did Dr. Joe's, you know, squeezing the, you know, the, the, the energy centers. Because it makes so much sense. It's such a, it's, it's a great idea. Just squeeze it all up, stick it up there in the, Top part of your body, let your body respond. And I, I did that, and I did it lovingly. Five days after surgery, I got off all the pain meds. And then, like, the prescription pain meds. And then I went on to, I don't know, one of the over-counter ones. And within five days, I was done. I mean, I had no pain. I had nothing. And so I'm going to one of the checkups, and the doctor told me, well, he said this in the hospital. The doctor said, hey, look, when you blew up your C1, you have these little rings which these vertebral arteries pass through that you nourish our brains. He said, well, it's blocked. It's just closed up. He said, but you have two, so you have a spare, so you get to, you know, you're fine. And I looked at him and I said, I'm going to do this spiritual meditation prayer thing. I said, so I said, is it better if it's open? And he said, well, he said, look, you know, it's closed. You have two. I said, no, I understand that. I said, but is it better if it's open? He said, well, look, it's blocked right now. And if you, he said, if a piece breaks off there and it goes to your brain, you will have a stroke and die. I said, I know. I said, but is it better if it's open? He said, well, yeah, of course it's better if it's open. I said, well, I'm going to do this, this thing. And I told him about becoming supernatural. I told him I learned this technique. I got it out of the book and was practicing it. And that's what I was planning on doing, <clears throat> which I did. And it was called a CTA scan. And then they, they, some months later, four months maybe, they do another CTA scan. And he says to me, he said to me, oh, by the way, and I was also on 325 milligrams of aspirin. That was just to keep everything flowing in my body and not have pieces breaking off and maybe potentially die. So. At the four-month checkup, he, the x-ray showed, <laughs> I gotta tell you something really funny. You, you can take this out. The x-ray tech, who's about 45, she's a really nice lady, and had a fun rapport with her. She's teaching this younger woman, about 30, how to do x-rays. And they got me lined up, and I'm, you know, I'm in there, and she said, she said, you know, I've never taken a picture of C1 before. I laughed at her, I go, yeah, it's because they're dead. Because the odds are so, no one, know, no, no one that I know of who's had that kind of accident survives. You just, in C2, you die. C3, you die. And I didn't die. And I know why I didn't die. And, and that's something the little boy was writing. So the four or the eighth month checkup showed that it's still open and everything's just fine. So I, I've told you know, this doctor that that you look, this is something you might want to consider, bring it into your patients. And when I looked at him, I said, oh, how do you explain this being open? And he said, I don't know. He said, I don't know. He said, sometimes we doctors just take our hands off you patients and you heal and we don't know why. And what Dr. Joe is teaching is so Simple, I mean, it's so, it's so simple. It seems like that can't work, but it really does, really does something. It really does have a healing effect in it, as does the power of love, which I, I believe in too. This is something that will revolutionize the world because this is so far advanced from just Typical meditation, which I've done, just close your eyes. I mean, I've done so many times, close your eyes, think of nothing. Well, okay, you think of nothing, you will, you get nothing. <laughs> you know, that's not that helpful. I mean, I feel peaceful, but, you know, this is, this is directed. And that's, that's what's cool about this. It's like, okay, fill in the blank. What do you want? Well, you got infinite possibilities. What do you want? You, we all get to choose.